University leaders joined representatives of eight partner organizations to launch Patients, an interdisciplinary program guided by a steering committee of stakeholders and directed by pharmacy professor C. Daniel Mullins. At the heart of the program is a concept known as PCOR. Patient-centered outcomes research, I simplify this for other people by saying, if you think that you know what comparative effectiveness research is and you actively engage patients, that's PCOR. Uh, comparative effectiveness research is having alternative ways of treating, so no placebo comparators. It's broad patient populations, and it's what is important to patients being measured. Um, when you add patient engagement into that, you have PCOR. Patients is initially funded by a grant from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. We're going to be committed. We're going to be committed to really enhancing our patient care, knowing how we reach those patients that are difficult, providing care irregardless of uh, racial, uh, gender, etc., but also using the expertise that we have here at the University of Maryland, all of the schools and the hospital, uh, our external partners that are part of this grant and creating an infrastructure that will be sustainable. Let me talk about research on this campus. Uh, and for example, in the School of Medicine, most of our research is basic science research. About 90% of research is basic science. I'm a basic scientist myself. Most of all of my research is basic science research. However, we need to translate that work to patients. Because that is, and, and, and therefore, at least our mother is, is doing research that has an impact on human health. If, if it doesn't get there at some point, then it really is it's hard to work the research to begin with. So it, it is a real, it's a real treat to see you folks come together to do just that, to take the other end of the spectrum, which really counts most, and that is the patient-centered research or patient-oriented research, which is so badly needed. Steering committee members share their perspectives as faculty researchers, representatives of healthcare providers, and individual patients and patient advocates. Partners include a support group for thousands whose leaders logged in from as far away as the UK. We are not care recipients, we are care participants. And can we receive care, that is true. But how we receive that care is very much mediated by who we are and how we interact with our caregivers. Um, so out of my own care that I've received, which has been life-affirming and life-lengthening um, and quality of life enhancing for me, I have become a patient advocate and my goal as a patient advocate is to teach other patients their right and responsibility to be their own advocate, to be their own voice, to speak up. <clears throat> Through an organization that I've been consulting with and really building a workforce of training and developing patient advocates community health workers, community health advocates in their own neighborhoods through organizations, community-based organizations, hospitals, churches, to really understand what health care has been, have, what, what it was, what it's going to be, and how they are the key to making all of the new health care changes really come alive and um, benefit them. I'm also a caregiver. My mom has uh, a couple of chronic uh, illnesses that she deals with. And to me, that's the toughest job out of all the other stuff that I've done. But um, it's necessary to have initiatives like this to help caregivers really navigate the process in the system. In keeping with a core value at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, collaboration, the program involves all of the schools and the School of Public Health at the University of Maryland College Park. UMB President Jay Perman shared insights from his interdisciplinary clinic. Some of you know that I see patients with a student or more from each and every one of the professional schools. We try to break the traditional model of seeing the patient as providers or providers who are learners and then coming out of the room and having an erudite discussion about what the patient needs and what the family needs and the person missing around the table is the patient and the patient's family. This is the way we've traditionally done it. And uh, we have to change that. Uh, so as a result, whenever possible, 
we have the, quote, presentation of the patient by the learner in front of the patient. And uh, it's so much richer because we are corrected, as we should be when we think we heard something and it was wrong. And we also have the patient and the family right there in the room as we construct the plan we propose to the patient. And we have uh, the important opportunity, really the responsibility, of hearing from the patient or the patient's family, I don't understand that. Or how does that work? Or I'm not going to be able to afford what you want me to do. That's the way it should be. And I think you've brought it up to another level. You've actually engaged families, you've engaged patients in saying, uh, here is the way you need to study the problem. We need to contribute to the way you propose to study a problem, to the way you propose to gather data, to the conclusions that you draw. It's a partnership. Committee members expressed eagerness to move forward with a model that will make research more meaningful by directly engaging patients in contrast to common past practices. And as Mullins put it, the approach will be refreshingly straightforward. We always thought we were conducting patient-centered outcomes research, and this might be a surprise to you, but we never asked patients. You know, uh, and the outcomes that we are measuring in this study are self-management when a patient is discharged. Can they care for themselves at home? Um, are they confident in caring for themselves and managing and maintaining um, their uh, health? Their knowledge, do, does what we do improve their knowledge in any way, which should be a precursor for them caring for themselves at home. And then readmission. Now, patients don't typically care about readmission. We do in the health system in a big way. Um, they care about, uh, sometimes they want to be readmitted. But we've never really asked patients, are these the outcomes we should be measuring and that you care about? So at the beginning of the study, we're going to do some qualitative work with some of uh, the rural patients to make sure, first of all, are the comparators right? Are these the comparators? Would you, uh, is, is this the right intervention in the toolkit? We'll be getting some feedback. Um, every time we get feedback, we know we have to change our protocol just a little bit, sometimes a lot, um, because uh, we, we know that their input is absolutely essential if we're ever going to spread this. We do need to think about doing. That was the term that we heard from patients over and over. Don't get complex, don't use fancy buzzwords. It's about doing research, doing healthcare. And then finally, it is about updating. And we all know that that's an important part. So the doing part includes implementation, but it's also updating the community on what has happened. And one of the things that we hear over and over from communities are that that you might think that updating is telling us the results of your research. That's not all that's part of updating. Part of updating is letting us know, you know, when did you enroll your last patient? Did you actually enroll any patients other than me? Those kinds of things. So it's, it's really about updating. And, and if we follow this step and we keep trust as, you know, some of the things that are at forefront in our minds, we will have a successful partnership as a group, but also with the patients whom we engage in our research in the future.